Do you remember to hear join backstage at Cage Warriors 98 with Mike Ekendai, who's going to be taking on Jack Shaw at Cage Warriors 100 in December for the Cage Warriors Bantamweight title. Um, Mike, you know, just said there you're going to be fighting for the Cage Warriors Bantamweight title. How does that kind of feel? And tell me, how did this fight come together? Um, well, fighting for the Bantam, Cage Warriors Bantamweight title feels like it was planned for, for a couple of years, I guess, since, since Nathaniel won it, Nathaniel Wood won it, so yeah, it was always the plan for him to win the title, hold on to the title, defend the title, um, and then move on to bigger and better things, which he is doing now, which I, we're all happy for, and then it was always the plan for me to come off the back of that, and then claim the title after he does, so it's, I, I, when it was, when that plan was um, said to me, many, many probably a couple of years ago now, I guess, a year or so ago, when that plan was said to me, um, I always said it's, it's past the parcel with the cage warriors belt, that like, Team Titans is playing past the parcel with the belt, so yeah, that's how I see it, it's just normal now, it's just normal, that's what, that's what we had planned, planned for, for months. I mean, like, you're going to be facing Jack Shaw. Now, mm -hmm. Jack's had, I guess, a lot of a promotional push. Like, yep. he's, he is one of the Cage Warriors people that, you know, you kind of see, and he's on all the posters, he's headlining events. Like, like, you know as well. How, 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 how does it feel coming in as the challenger in this sense? Like, you, you are the guy that perhaps maybe people think is the underdog just for the reason that he's so. had the majority yeah, yeah, of the promotional so. push. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how does it feel like being the underdog? Um, it's what it is, it's a fight game. One person has to be in the red corner, one, one person has to be in the blue corner. That's just how the nature of the sport works. You can't both be in the red corner. Someone has to be an underdog, someone has to be a favourite in, in some sense. So it just is what it is. It's just what we sign, sign up for. It's just, that's just how the game goes. You can't always be in the red corner. I'm in the red corner quite a bit. I'm in the blue corner this time. I was in the blue corner for my last fight. So it's, it's, not, it's not unfamiliar territory. So. It just is what it is. It's the fight game. We fight. How do you feel he match up against Jack? He's obviously undefeated. IMF mm -hmm. champion. He's come in. He's, he's done very well in his professional career yeah. as well. Like, what, what do you think of him as an opponent? Um, what do I think of him as an opponent? Yeah, he's undefeated amateur. He's undefeated professional. As am I. As am I. I'm the same. The, the very same. But if you break it down and you look at if you now... Okay, cool. We can both claim that we're undefeated amateur and pro but actually break down our wins, break down who we've won against, you'll see that the, the higher caliber, higher skills, skilled opponents, the higher caliber opponents come from my record, not his. It's the nature of the game though, so um, he's fought who he's fought, not knocking him for it, he's fought who he's fought, but the higher, the higher skilled opponents are on my record, not his. Last time out, you fought Ed Arthur. It was a great fight, yeah. competitive, but you, you dominated it. You, you know, mm -hmm. how, how did you feel going in there against a guy who has been on the UK MMA scene for a very long time? People uh, build him up, Dan Hardy especially, yeah, kind of, of in course, his corner, building him up. Yeah. How did it feel getting a victory over him? Um, like I said, like I'm signing a contract to win. I'm not signing a contract to to lie down and let someone beat me. Like take blue corner and red corner in, into consideration. I was in the blue corner for that fight. I was the underdog for that fight. Ed Arthur had all the hype in that fight. So I've been here before. That's basically what I'm saying. I've been here before. Um, I was there for the Ed fight. Um, fair enough, Ed didn't come off Cage Warriors. Jack Shaw does. But um, Ed had the, more the push from, I'll say, yourselves, yourselves, like from the journalists, and stuff I didn't so I'm used to I'm used to all of this happening it's, it's normal it's the fight game you are gonna gravitate to people Ed Arthur's been there for for much longer than I have as well so you are going to gra gravitate to him it's, I'm not knocking you guys for for whatever happened but I'm just saying I've been I've been I've done all of this before I've been here before it's just normal you're saying earlier, coming from Team Titan, mm -hmm. Nathaniel Wood, Brad Puckett, uh, Dominic Wooding, like so many great guys Ashley in your Grimshaw. gym. Ashley Grimshaw, Ashley Grimshaw. I'm not going to forget Marcus him. Paul. Marcus Paul, George Tukos. You tell me, what's it like training with these Nathan guys day in, day out? Is, um, training with these guys day in, day out, I believe, I believe that Team Titans has the best talent in Europe. Like on our blue and black mats in North London, I believe Team Titans has the best talent in Europe. 
uh, the, the names you've named, we've got even even more fighters than that. I don't want to forget names, but we've got even more fighters than that. I believe like our our gym alone is um, full of highly skilled mixed martial arts fighters. So name another gym that has more talent on their mats. It's hard. It's hard. Our gym is full of talented young fighters. A lot of them are in in and around my weight as well. So just imagine how much of a beast I am if I can. If I can hold my own in, on a, on a, on our sparring days, so yeah. What do the next kind of few weeks look like for you? It's like I think it's about six weeks now until the fight. Seven. Seven. <laughs> You're Seven. counting down. I'm on the wall. I'm on the wall. <laughs> like you know, what what do those kind of weeks look like? No, 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 no. I, I just see everything as normal. The only thing that wasn't well, let me just deviate a bit. The only thing that wasn't a bit normal was um, when the fight actually got announced. That was the only time I was like super excited when, actually no, not when it got announced, when I signed the contract, mm. which was the day before it got announced. That was the only time I was super excited. But other than that, all of it's normal. This is what I signed up for. So to go back to your question, sorry, what did you ask? I just said like the, the next kind of seven weeks, as you mm -hmm. would say, like do you- Oh, it's just gonna be, it's yeah. gonna be like the rest of my year. I've had three fights, three tough fights all year, tough, tough gritty matchups, tough young hungry guys that I fought. So I've done three camps already this year, so I'm used I'm used to another one. So it's just gonna be like the rest of my year pretty much. Right then last question, like how does it end, I guess at Cage Warriors one hundred? How does it end? Me in the cage with the belt, strap season, get the strap, get the strap, hashtag put him on the flight, get the strap man, that's what that's how it ends. That's how it ends. Great stuff, Mike. Uh, best of luck for Cage Warriors 100, and no Thank doubt you. we'll talk to you after the fight. Thank you.